Hello, this is out of the blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. This week, my special guests are Eric Archbold and Susan Hutzelak. I have known Eric and Susan for many years. Both of them have devoted their lives to the teachings of A Course in Miracles, and have been living in the Living Miracles community. Today, we will be very transparent, and share the lessons we have learned in relationship as well as in community living. Hi, Eric. Hi, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Francis. <laughs> It was really good to have you guys here.、Mm. Yeah, thank wow. you. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I just want to、um, start this show by introducing you guys a little bit. And Susan, you know, I actually only recently found out. That you were in your fourth year of PhD、mm-hmm. in magical education before you came to live in the Living Miracles community, and you also studied a year of quantum physics in your undergrad program. So, <laughs> yeah, that's quite a drastic shift of focus of your pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> so, what、uh, can you talk a little bit? About that journey, what caused that、um, that drastic change? What caused it? <laughs> yeah, what activated you、wow. to go to a total different direction?、Mm. Um, I f- I feel like I、um, it was like this discovery that that was really like felt really deep, but I didn't fully like the intellect didn't couldn't grasp it or something, but. Something was kind of like showing up in my mind, or showing up in my life,、um, like pretty quickly, actually.、Um, um, see that I don't know if I to go through all the timing of it, but the yeah, it's, it was sort of like there was this unfolding that was happening because I had been a, a student of the course for. A, a, quite a few years, and almost like kind of, it was okay, but I didn't really, I don't know if I was fully getting it or fully, you know, experience, you know, fully, really、um, having what what it actually had to offer or something like that. Or, and then at one point, I don't know what it is, but I just remember sitting at coffee with a friend of mine in a cafe one day and. She mentioned the, na- the name David Hofmeister. She said that she had this friend on Facebook or something like that, and and then in that moment, I was like, "Wait, I friended him like two years earlier or something," and, and that's all I knew. But I had this really strong feeling I needed to reach out to him, and then I did, and it was like things just unfolded really quickly after that. I. I I reached out to him. I had a, it was just a feeling. It was purely a feeling. I reached out to him. I said hi. <laughs> I was like hi. Like I, <laughs> I'm not sure if I really said much more. I was just I wanted to say hi, and、uh, and he got back and said, oh, there's a there's a devotional center just opened up near your house, <laughs> and it had literally one month earlier, like it was like one month earlier, it had literally just opened up. It was brand brand new.、Oh. It, 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 it they hadn't even opened their doors yet. I don't think like it was brand new, and it was it was really wild because I was like, and then he's like, well, maybe you could, you know, you know, reach out to them or something like that. But I think it was like within maybe three months from that, I I had a call with him, and、uh, and yeah, yeah. All I can say is like I had such a strong feeling. Like there was a strong. What? Whoa! Like this is this is not <laughs> this is not like anything that that I've ever had before with with anyone or yeah. You know, I mean, it was just such a strong experience or strong feeling.、Um, and and then when I went, I actually went short. I think it was like shortly after that I went to the devotional center, 
um, just down the road. And again, I remember walking in the door and having this really strong feeling of like my heart's just like, like exploding or something. And so what it was for me was just a feeling. It was just this feeling of, Oh my gosh, this is, I, I want this. <laughs> I mean, this is not, this is not like my experience in the world. There's something way past, way bigger, way vaster here. And it was so attractive. It was so beautiful. It was like that I was just mesmerized by it. I just had, you know, I just knew in my heart that I had to go this direction. I, I there was nothing I couldn't, there was no way I could have said no to that. <laughs> like it was just too strong kind of thing. And yeah, so, so at, kind of backing up for a moment, when all of this happened, I was a, a doing my PhD. I was really immersed. I was, I had just done, finished my candidacy exams, which is a major step on, on your PhD where you, you're about to do your research. I was, I had done a ton of co- coursework. I was doing really well. I had straight A's. I mean, everything was looking good in a certain way, but there was something, there was something missing. There was something going on, but even at the time I wasn't fully aware of it. Like I just, I was pushing it. I was trying to make it happen. I, at some level, I was trying to, um, just like trying to, to rationalize it, I guess, in my mind that this is a good thing. I, I need to stay the course. I have to, I have to finish this. I was like, like there's this determination, this kind of like kind of proud, prideful determination that was there that I was just like, I've done well. I've put all of this, all of these years of education have been there. So I, I have to keep going. Um, this is good. I mean, I just had so many different reasons why I had to keep going. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because it was right around that same time because I had met a couple of, you know, there's a couple in particular, Mel and Michael at the devotional center really, really kind of ignited my heart. And, um, and, you know, all of it was, I'm just unfolding just beautifully actually. But at the same time, um, I just remember, yeah, I can't remember exactly at what point, but I, I remember writing an email to David kind of out of the blue. Like I just said, Oh, David, this is, this is what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm in my PhD. And I, th- these are all the reasons why I really think it's a great idea. And <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. It was on the placebo effect. It was kind of my, my research. And I just, I just thought it was the, m- the most amazing thing, you know, I should just keep going. And he, he got back almost really fast. Like I think on the, on the maybe, maybe a couple of hours or something and said, no, I, I, I feel that like you should leave your PhD. <laughs> Just like that. I think he, he answered in like one sentence or two sentences or something. And, and then, but the, the interesting thing is when I read that, it was like, I felt, wow, this is good. <laughs> like I was, it was almost like I was waiting to be, I was waiting for someone somewhere in the universe to give me permission. Cause I think deep down, I, I, you know, I really needed to get out of there. I had, I was, I was, I was dying in there and I, and I just needed someone to rescue me. <laughs> I think that was like the rescue email. It was like, no, you have, you have full, you have full permission to, 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 to follow your heart. Even though, I think what it was. <laughs> even though the email you wrote to him was not asking for that. You were, you were asking the word. So you didn't mention that. I think you asked him, should I stay in my PhD? No, I was telling, the whole, it was a whole explanation reason. about why I should stay in. Should it's like, so it's like, yeah. uh, deep down, it was so buried okay. that I want to get out, but it was so hidden even to yourself. Yeah. And then you wrote a whole email about how great the program is and why you need to stay. It was like, you want to convince yourself you need to stay. Yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah. waiting for or someone in the universe to give you permission at some level. But, but what was cool is I really felt it. And I think it was like, I think it was like the next day or something I pulled out. Like it was so, it was so easy to do it. Like it was so, it was like, it was like taking off a dirty shirt. There was, there was nothing, nothing to it in a way. And yeah. And then I could just kind of, yeah, it, actually in the, and everyone around me at the time too, they're like, great. Like I, I didn't get any kind of pushback or whatever. So I think the whole universe was at the time, you know, it's just saying, yeah, fantastic. Just yeah. keep going. Yeah. So, yeah. And that is also a, a shift of the, the total outcome that you're looking for in life because you're pursuing PhD, not, not because you're enjoying, I mean, maybe you did enjoying all the research and all the study, but there is a, you know, so-called a reward at the end, you're going to be in, you know, in hospitals or, 
um, become something, making lots of money, making money, and, and be feeling you know you're you, you're established in some way that is very recognized and approved. And here, after dropping out, you came you came to live in a spiritual community. You do your daily tasks and purely practice. Forgiveness work that is completely inside, inside. You know, there is no reward at the end of the tunnel that is tangible. Mm-hmm. It's completely inside. Whether you receive the joy after the forgiveness work mm-hmm. or you don't, it's only you know. And and how how is that for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there has been, a, there's been a lot of miracles. Um, you're right. Like going into, going into this, I've had to go, it was like, it's like taking a trip into the mind. I had to go into these, these, these different parts of my mind in a way that, that I never wanted to go in. Like I was given, I was given accounting and I was giving administration. I was given things like that for, for some of the tasks I had here, I still have, <laughs> but there is like, um, these are all the types of things I, I used to be scared of in the world. I didn't want to, I, I avoided them like crazy. I, I didn't, I didn't balance my checkbooks. I didn't really like looking at my bank accounts and all I just avoided all of it. And, and in some ways like coming in here, it's like this journey into doing sort of facing the thoughts and facing all these kind of parts of my mind where I, I can't rely on like, um, like personal interest or personal passion or, you know, or, or like, um, getting accolades, um, from the world, um, at all. Like the, the really, it's like all of that got wiped clean and, and it was more just like, okay, now why, why, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, it's like, there was like so much, he- there's been so much healing of, of why, like, what's the, what's the purpose? Like what, if there's no, if you're not doing it for any kind of external, you know, or any kind of future, even future ideal, because I think that was part of it for me, it was just this, my big master plan of, of happiness, actually, I, that I would accomplish something and then I would be happy sort of thing. So, so it was always either just the outside world, you know, receiving something, getting something from, from others, you know, like pat on the back, good job, you're worthy of love, you know, like all this sort of stuff or, or getting something from the future, like the future is going to deliver finally one day, it, you know, it might take 30 years, but it's going to deliver. And so, but when you clean that all out (laughs) and then you're left with like Mm -hmm. almost like a clean slate and Mm -hmm. okay, here's your, here's your, your job. I want you to do some accounting or I want you to do this or that, you know, the Holy Spirit comes in really quick to kind of, you know, we'll fill up that empty space with, with a lot of doing seeming doings, you know, but, um, and, and yeah, I, I, I can just see that like so much of it has just been about, this, this deep practice of, of getting really still getting yeah. really like, um, pra- like practicing to listen and follow the spirit, like doing these things that uh, for a reason that has nothing to do with the old reasons. Like yeah. it's, it's like a clean, it's like a, a, yeah, I would say like, it's about much more about going inward yeah. and just facing whatever, yeah. whatever is down there yeah, yeah. on a daily basis. But talking about busy doings, I have to switch to Eric. <laughs> Eric, Eric. I mean, the one one thing that feels really um, interesting to me is, even though our community seem to have a hierarchical structure, meaning we have so called pe- uh, leadership roles and so called um, follower roles, but ultimately it, it's according to a calling and uh, very temporary. So those who take on the leadership roles, they feel called, they feel inspired, and they're going to take on a lot and all the lessons that come with the leadership role as well. And then after they finish that, they probably feel to move on to the next projects and then be collaborating or be following. And I see so many shifts, shifts and changes, but Eric, actually you... You put your hand up. You said you were very inspired mm-hmm. to to fly down from Utah to Mexico to 
lead oversee the whole Mexico community, and it was very joyful. We were like, "Okay, Eric wants to lead. That's that's so wonderful." And then, and you took it on. You really, really, really took it on. I mean, looking at how much that's on your plate, I can't even, I can't even count. You're, you know, you're overseeing our studio and. All the events that you know, every single week, one or multiple events, multilingual events, you are doing. You know, you're overseeing our core community here in Mexico. You're overseeing the another ring, a co-living communities. You're overseeing all the properties. You're overseeing the tech, the websites. Everything that I can, our two-year mystical mind training program, and、uh, I actually just even heard recently from Emily that you're because you're overseeing this、uh, studio and and our weekly Saturday movie workshop with David, and you're so、um, you just put so much care. You actually wrote out everybody's lines for every single host. <laughs> and every single facilitator, because that event has host and have different support team facilitators for expression groups and chat,、uh, text mon- mon- moderators, and and you wrote out a whole script for absolutely everybody. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Eric, <laughs> Eric, you, <laughs> you're just like wow, doing everything, giving. Giving everything, you know, in just total service, total service for no other ambition. Just like what Susan said, you're not doing it for end goal. Absolutely no other ambition, but just to serve. And、um, yeah, how does that feel? And what are the what are the experience in that? What what is the reward for you? And what are the challenges in that?、Mm, yeah. Well, it has been really inspiring. When I first had the inspiration to come down here, I think I just I felt kind of bored at the time. I was overseeing a few areas like our YouTube channel and our two-year mystical mind training program, and a few other little things. But yeah, I, I was starting just to have this thought: like, I think I need. I either need to do something totally different, which in the past I've I've left the community many times just to go traveling because. I love. I also love doing gatherings and talking to people about、um, this pathway and what David teaches.、Um, I love singing and doing music, and、um, so that's always been kind of my my way of, of of what I thought I needed in the past was just to leave and go traveling. But you know, with the pandemic <laughs> happening this year, I was I was it was really clear to me that that going and traveling wasn't going to be a good option. And then when I heard that there was kind of a need for someone to step into the leadership role here, something just lit up in my mind, and I thought, yeah, this will provide me with a lot of opportunities for expansion and growth. And、uh, it has. I, I just feel like it's been really,、um, I don't know, helping me to look at a lot of things. I can I can see too that even what you mentioned with like writing out all the lines for people for our movie workshop. There's a lot of perfectionism that I'm I'm working on, like undoing and looking at, and yet it seems to just come out in these ways of like, yeah, I want to make sure that the events go perfectly, that everything goes perfectly. <laughs> so, so it's probably it's kind of like the spirit, I guess, using my perfectionism in a helpful way while also showing me that you don't need to do every little thing. So.、Um, Yeah, in that regard, it's been helpful to have people like Emily and Greg to join with around decisions and what is for me to take on versus what is for me to delegate.、Um, that's been, I think, a really inspiring part of being in a leadership role is that it, I do have to practice delegating a lot more instead of just doing everything myself.、Um, but yeah, I've, I've just I've really enjoyed it, and I, I can see. How the ego comes up and tries to be the the hero, like like I like the 
a superhero, you know, leader who can, who can do everything. And, and I can see this motivation of like, everyone will love me if I do everything perfectly. And, and yet that also comes with a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. And so I, every day I feel is an opportunity for me to kind of like balance that mm-hmm. or to, to discern, really just discern what I'm to do. And, and just to practice staying very in the moment and only do what I'm actually feeling like a lightness and inspiration for and mm. trusting that, um, yeah, everything will work out if I, if I just stay in that, in that present mm-hmm. flow. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that that's very unique, um, opportunity when you're in a leadership role, because you get so full, your plate gets so full, and it's it's definitely a fine line um, that you have to work on between, you know, whether to make sure everything is done right, like a form outcome, versus a present peace goal. Yeah. And <laughs> and I know sometimes we will talk and you're like, if I take a break, I'm really concerned things will get dropped because because if you allow your mind to even pull out from something for even a day, mm-hmm. that's the, the threat in your mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's like spinning a lot of plates. And if I, don't, if I stop spinning, everything will just crash to the floor. And, and yet I keep being shown that, you know, I'll usually hit a point where I, I literally can't keep spinning the plates. I have to stop and then, and I'll kind of crash. I'll go in the other direction. I'll just like totally <laughs> have to be laid out for like hours or even a day or two. And then, and facing all these fears, like, oh my God, the ego is just screaming at me. Like you are going to get punished. Like things are going to fall and break and it's going to be all your fault because you didn't keep going. But every time I, it, I, I, and I always feel like, what if I never come back? Like, what if I, what if I never um, get reactivated? Like, you know, in these moments when I'm crashed out and I just need to take a break and let my mind rest, the fear is that what if I never actually get inspired again? But every time I get shown that at some point the inspiration just comes through again and I get activated to start kind of doing things again and, and nothing broke and nothing fell apart. And, mm-hmm. and it's, yeah, it's been a really beautiful series of lessons in trust. Yeah. I just see how perfect, um, you know, the less or the, the curriculum is for absolutely every single one of us, because this is the way to undo the perfectionism is that you, you literally cannot do that. Hmm. and you have to if you if you try to aim for that you have to compromise the peace in your mind and if you go in for peace you have to let go of any potential goal in the future and in the form outcome even in your own particular area mm-hmm. and that is uh, that's a lesson we have to learn over and over again until we completely feel convinced okay if I just choose for miracle in this moment, if I choose for peace, then the peace will radiate out of me and everything will be taken care of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it seems confusing sometimes because we, we're, it's like the spirit gives us these functions and these areas. And so there is a certain amount of like, okay, I need to really pour my heart into this because this has been given to me by the spirit for my healing. But then at the same time, which seems like a paradox, we have to let go of like having a goal, like a future goal within it. Like, yeah. you know, to finish, even to finish a project, have to keep emptying the mind while, while not pushing it away. It's like a, it's kind of a, yeah, it feels like a paradox yeah. sometimes, but it's really beautiful. Yeah, I think the only way that we, in the end, have to choose to walk is to allow the spirit to do the things for us. Because I, I just remember recently um, one of the Saturday movie workshop. Um, I think we decided on the movie the day before, and then Marina realized that the Spanish subtitle that we have is really, really poor. 
and she put put her hand up saying, "I'm going to translate." Basically, she had half day left to translate the whole movie <laughs> from English to Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that was purely out of care and out of the joy of wanting to wanting to offer, wanting to offer because because she feels she has something to offer and to give. And then she she did it, probably did it until midnight, and then there's a tag team of Zach and JP. Okay, we take it from here. We're going to place it in the screen, Spanish on top, English on the bottom. We're going to place it perfectly. And it is such such a collaboration and really so much work behind it, and yet no nothing is really seen. You know, like mm-hmm. nothing is really seen on the surface, and yet... The, the the work that you put in is purely because because you receive the joy of giving it and there is no other reason there is no real need to be perfect and yet this is the reason we do anything and I I I just feel I really see when I look around of everybody that's what I I see that everybody just want to give and want to see where they can contribute. And they give because of the joy they receive through the process. Yeah, giving, yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, for a lot of people in the community, I know that the lesson is not so much um, we need to learn how to push ourselves, how to say yes, but it's the other way. Like, we need to know to not go overboard, to not <laughs> <laughs> to have to really let the spirit do it through. You know, to not get into the perfectionism mm. and to aim for the future goal. Yeah, yeah. Most of us who are in the community now have have already gone like we've dedicated ourselves like full time, and so yeah, the, the tendency is to go at least for me to definitely go further. And yeah, it, it has been more of a lesson in just relax, you know, just trust and be gentle. Yeah, yeah, that's really beautiful. Okay, well, I want to mention that um, I know that you guys have been in the community for a long time, but recently you guys also started a relationship. So I think there are a lot of um, unique lessons that we face in relationship you know, forgiveness opportunities and um, different things um, that would rise up only in the context of intimate relationship. And also in our community, we practice no private thoughts and no people-pleasing. So in a relationship, that's we're already very um, used to that. So I just want to open the conversation around your relationship and uh, how what are the lessons that you guys have learned and what are the challenges or the lessons that you guys are facing right now that you want to share Hmm. yeah yeah i think um for me it there's always like a fear around sharing private thoughts when those private thoughts feel like they could um hurt the other person's feelings. Um, yeah, I've had like, this has come up pretty much in every relationship I've ever been in, you know, in my life where I'll be with, I'll be with someone who I feel a huge amount of love for. And I know I'm supposed to be with them, but I'll still seem to have these temptations about other women come into my mind. Uh, whether it's, walking through a grocery store and seeing the magazines of these models and and thinking, Oh, that would be great if I could be with a model or, or just thinking of people I've known or whom I know and just, yeah, these temptations to think that something could be better in form. And then when those thoughts arise, it's, it's, there's a feeling of just, okay, definitely need to keep that under wraps. I'm not going to, I'm not going to share that because if I told my partner about these thoughts I'm having about other women, then she's going to feel hurt and angry and, and then our relationship won't be happy (laughs) anymore. So yes, 
as I've gone deeper with A Course in Miracles, and especially in this community where we, we really are encouraging um, ourselves, giving ourselves permission to let these private thoughts be exposed, um, I've, I've started to learn that I have to take little risks, what seem like risks, and be more transparent with, um, with my partner right now, with Susan, um, since we've been together since, uh, I guess, August or September. Um, so it's been about six, seven months now. And yeah, it definitely has, has flushed up a lot of emotions between us and a lot of, yeah, me getting in touch with the guilt that's associated with those kinds of thoughts. Um, but ultimately trusting that, that it's because our purpose is healing because we're here to practice forgiveness with each other and to heal the mind and to see that all these, these thoughts aren't really who we are. Um, I've, I've discovered that it's, it's so releasing and so freeing when I do share the thoughts and then, and then I can feel that I'm forgiven and, mm-hmm. and that I can forgive myself and I can feel, see the reflection mm-hmm. come back. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it, it's still kind of, it feels like it just goes deeper and deeper and, um, Every day it feels like I have to just be very vigilant with watching my mind and being open to, mm-hmm. to be transparent. What about for you, Susan? <laughs> yeah, well, um, hmm. yeah, it's been, it's been a trip. And I'll have to say there's been some intensity for me. Um, yeah, a lot does get fleshed up with the private thoughts, it, it, it's, you know, I, I feel like I can see that every time something comes up and I get in touch with some of these emotions like hurt or abandonment or rejection or whatever they are. Um, it's almost like, like, it's almost like what often I can see my whole life <laughs> flash in front of me. And I can see that I spent my life guarding against, seeing that or something like that, that I've always, it's like, I've always had these real other relationships where that, that was never a problem. <laughs> it, was all, it was like, um, like I, I never, I don't know. I, I just never really had, I mean, I had, I've had moments, but for the most part, just really felt secure and loved and got a lot of reflections of you're so perfect and beautiful and wonderful and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And like just stuff to really, I would say, kind of beef up my self confidence, my self worth, my self concept. Like, I'm 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 a strong, worthy person in the world, and you know I'm I'm I, I have it made basically. And um, so when it's like when you start to put the put the put the vehicle in reverse, and you start to go into the mind deeper, then of course it's like the spirit will come in to orchestrate things you know, that, that will allow some of these darker thoughts, these fears, the, the abandonment or whatever it is will start to show up and, and, and to actually have to face that. And, and, and I know that like the purpose is, is really, um, obvious. Like the purpose is to, is just to release them is really just to, mm-hmm. you know, like to really see, see the falsity and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and really go for the miracle, go for the shift kind of thing. And if there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of miracles. There's been a lot of times like something would just be like, come up so strong and gone. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. and what was that? Like, and then it's like me and Eric back into this joy, back into this, like almost like this playful mm-hmm. childlike kind mm-hmm. of connection where there was no problem, you know, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, it's still, you know, it's still, um, it's still something where I can, I can see that, part of going, going, going for the awake, going for this and in a big way means going through the darkness. It means like having to look at the stuff that I, I would never have been, you know, I would never have chosen to, to look at this before. So yeah, at some level, I guess I must have chosen that. Yeah. 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 But I would just say like, even to expand a little further is like, the self-concept is like really like, yeah, it's like, it's like, um, you know, how, how do you, you know, how, how do you like, um, let me put this, 
like, how do you wake up <laughs> when you still believe you're a body <laughs> and you, you believe that you're, you're, you're a person, you believe that you have characteristics and that you can, you can compare to mm-hmm. others around you. Like, mm-hmm. um, that somehow there's, there's, it's a, it, it, that there's inferior, there's mm-hmm. superior, there is something more, there's mm-hmm. something better. There's, there's someone better. And mm-hmm. what, what can get triggered, like just, you know, we were just talking right before the, the interview about this and Eric had something come up and it was along that line. And I could see that, Oh, okay. It just feels like this is, this is it again is like this idea that, that there's, there can be something more, you know, there's, there, there's something, you know, there's, there's something better out there. And, and it's a threat on us really connecting right mm-hmm. now. It like us really feeling the love right now. Yeah. So it's always this kind of dilemma when, yeah. when this comes up for me. Yeah. Yeah. What I see that in this situation, and actually in a lot of situations, but this situation is very clear, is that what triggers in, in Eric and what triggers in you are the exact same thing. Like, Eric, you, if you have those kind of thoughts... Um, fantasies or whatever, you feel guilty and you feel shame, you feel afraid to expose. Uh, because if you ex- expose, that would trigger the unworthiness in another. And it's like, the way I see it is, it's almost like this shame and this unworthy are the, the two sides of the, sh- the same coin and you cannot hold one true and release the other. So, it almost feels like if Eric really thinks those thoughts, if that's, that's who Eric is, then Susan, you do have the reason to feel unworthy. <laughs> and the only way that, that that can be completely forgiven is that both of you are going to be released together. That's the only way. So... I feel sometimes when, um, yeah, when, when someone comes to our, you know, in our presence to share, I have these thoughts and it's so dark. This is what I think, you know, when, when I don't share with other people, this is what's going on in my mind. And they, they, they may think that's what they think, but it is up to us to remind them that's not, that's, even that is not true. Even that is not true. And if we believe that, then we're both imprisoned. We're both imprisoned and there is no way out. So, so the only way I see is if Eric really thinks that thoughts and you guys are in a relationship and you try to solve it at that level, okay, is there somebody, somebody better really in your heart? It, you know, that there is no, there is no way out and there is no real forgiveness, but there is a way out. And I really see that. And that way out is, is that we hold the truth for the other, even if we can't hold it for ourselves. And that is the way out. Because I was just also thinking of this in a recent lesson, in Lesson 72, I think Jesus says something which is quite strong. And when I read it, I was like, wow, I have never heard Jesus say things this directly or strong, but it feels so loving. And he says, you're not dealing here with what a person is. On the contrary, you are exclusively concerned with what he does in the body. You are doing more than failing to help in freeing him from the body's limitations. When I read that, I thought, I'm more than failing. <laughs> What's good to know? <laughs> Anytime when I'm thinking about someone did something wrong, someone said something wrong, someone thought something wrong, and that is who they are, I'm more than failing to free him. And, and I was like, whoa, I really like that because that put all the responsibility back to my mind. I'm here to free. I'm here to free my brothers, not the other way around. I don't need them to free me. I don't need them to validate me. I have the power to free them by remembering who they are. 
not what they do, not what they do and what they say or even what they think. If if they think they're thinking the ego thoughts, and I feel this is such a perfect example to point at the scale of forgiveness that we're we're aiming for, and the freedom that is really、um, available. But it is available to free both. You know, it's a it's available outside of this realm of. Do you love me? Is my body good enough for you? Do is that possible? You love someone else. You think someone else. You think some fan. You have some fantasy in your mind that I can't fulfill. All of those realm is the realm to be forgiven, and that's what we're called to do. It's almost like saying, "I know you may think that about yourself. I know you think that about yourself, but if I'm here to forgive, to 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 practice true forgiveness, then I am have to. I am gonna ask to to see it truly, to really see it truly." And we will be shown how to see it truly, how to respond. That's what I learned. Really, I mean, none of us really have seen this done completely. But through us acting on it, we will learn and we will teach. We only learn while we're teaching. We're teaching something we haven't learned, basically, through the willingness to. To hold that high note with the spirit. And that's how we learn. That's how we teach. And that's how we forgive. And that's also how we set our brother and ourself free. So I, I really, truly, yeah, feel grateful for this example you guys bring up. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And、it feels very vulnerable, just going deeper into that.、Mm -hmm. What seems vulnerable to, yeah, to just keep trusting that that's all that matters. That I'm not, you know, I, I don't have to try to、um, be a good person or to try to be a good boyfriend or to maintain the relationship in the ways that the past would have taught. But, but to just keep trusting that, you know. Going into my mind, going and facing the darkness and allowing it to come up is,、um, and for the, for my own healing is all that really matters, and that has to be the only、uh, priority. Yeah. Yeah, and I I feel that's what relationship is for, you know, in this forgiveness pathway, because it does allow. These kind of thoughts to come up and be forgiven. Those thoughts probably will not normally come up to be shared with other people.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and if it is not shared, is kept hidden. Then deep down, we just believe we're this guilty and dark person.、Mm -hmm. We carry that. It doesn't really matter how much you know we achieve in life. There is. A dark corner that we never really look at and see that we're actually not that.、Mm -hmm. So I really feel excited because I see the potential of set both free.、Mm -hmm. Have you guys both be set free just through this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see like the the whole thing of no private thoughts, no people pleasing. Like the temptation is when this stuff comes up, is to for me anyway. It's like to try and be better. You try and almost like can I can I say something or do something to kind of improve myself to almost like almost like I I, I think I have to win Eric over or something. I have to I have to like counteract these thoughts with some better self. Like if that makes sense. Like 
you know, I've seen it in really subtle ways. Like, you know, like I'll say something and, um, maybe I should say something clever or, you know, I'll give him, give him a meal or, you know, something like there's this doing that wants to come in to try and correct these, these thoughts or something. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's, I know that that's sort of the old way, like this kind of like the worldly way of, and it's like a form of people pleasing. Like it's like, I have to try and try and please, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, but I, yeah, it's like, it's more like this stuff has to get exposed and I can mm-hmm. feel like the power of that, mm-hmm. like just exposing it and, and not being afraid to, to, to share mm-hmm. what's real in the moment. Like I'm feeling hurt. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that you're going to leave me or whatever it is, you know, in the, mm-hmm. and there's the vulnerability. It's like, it's, uh, to me, it's, it's so much about going into the vulnerability and, yeah. and not hiding it and not trying to put on a happy face or uh, the strong woman that wants to come in. I'm like this kind of yeah. self-reliant thing that likes yeah. to try and come in. Yeah. So. That's what Jesus talked in uh, Cross of Miracles about forgiveness to destroy, um, which is that you condemn first and then you try to forgive or you, you make the error real. So, for example, if if that thought is real, okay, Eric does think that, mm-hmm. that's settled, the case settled in that level, then I'm going to correct that by being a better wife, being a better girlfriend, being a better whatever concept. That is not true forgiveness because you're not free. You're not free. He's not free. You guys are trying to perf- like fulfill a role for each other. You know, that is people pleasing, but, but the forgiveness, the true forgiveness is not even accepting the first error. Like that thought does not feel like the thought of the spirit. It's an ego thought, the ego thought of whatever it, you think, Susan, maybe I'm less, maybe others are better. This comparison thoughts, maybe Eric loves um, form beauty. Even that thought, that's your interpretation. And that is all ego thoughts. That has to be first questioned instead of like, that is true. Then how can I compensate to, to get a little bit out of this relationship, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah it's good it's i feel like that's like part of it's part of the mind training when we talk about mind training and yeah. just seeing these thoughts come up and just to me like i think i think i could see definitely there's been progress like i at the beginning i would just react and go into some kind of unworthiness and just kind of stay there oh he, he's look what he's done again kind of thing whereas now it feels more uh, like a bit more detachment i was like seeing the thought and i was like oh that's interesting you know it's yeah. almost more more from a from like a like a an observer like oh hmm what is that like just yeah. starting to yeah and i feel like that's the loosening or something that yeah. that seems to be happening but yeah. yeah it's the more i kind of i kind of grab onto it and like almost like it's like come up with a story like i you know i'll see myself oh they're just this is real he this is this is a true thought i i now i have to i have to deal with this like now i have to i have to like i have to i have to cope with this problem Mm -hmm. that's now now look he brought up a problem i didn't know it was there before but now it's clearly a problem Mm -hmm. and something to something to you know, um, grapple with and worry about or yeah. whatever. So, so I can see that's such a key part of it is like just to, the practice of just, just, just back up, just let go, <laughs> you know, just let go and just watch it move through. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's not what I think. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Maybe what he thinks he thinks is not real. Mm-hmm. I mean, that possibility has to be has to be open to, has to be allowed because that's what the spirit the spirit is saying the thought you think you think is not your own. So it's like, okay, we're open to have the spirit come through. First step is exposing. And I, I feel you guys are so open to each other. <laughs> you know, it's this, this um, context and the safety is already set. So to be able to share those kind of thoughts openly is a gift. 
And then we have to allow the spirit to take our mind fully to extend something from him. Because I, you know, like I said, I really see that Eric's thoughts and Susan's thoughts are not separate, are not two thoughts, are not Eric thinks this first and Susan thinks that. As a consequence, it's not true. It's one thought, got two, two sides, interpret this way or that, that way. And if you forgive one, you're free. And if you don't forgive, you're chained in prison together, you know? <laughs> so it's just tremendous opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, I think we can just wrap up here, and I really hope that we can come back together again at some point and explore some other topics as well. Hmm. So I just hmm. really want to thank you guys for your transparency and for everything, for your devotion and, yeah, and for your joy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Francis. Yeah. It's been very, very helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love you guys. Uh, <laughs> you too. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs>